Hello, dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. I had another dream last night. I woke up in the middle of the night uh, with a feeling someone was laughing uh, maniacally, you know, like with mania, and um, saying, and now I send it off to kill someone. I, uh, and he was talking about pulling my own third eye point, which has to do with pituitary gland energy, out of the middle of my head, through my forehead, grabbing it outside of my head in the astral uh, field, and uh, wishing it to kill someone else through some kind of death ray. <clears throat> and so when I woke up, I was in the middle realm between... Um, the fourth dimension and the third dimension, the area where dreams meet physical reality. You know, talked about that before. Um, sometimes I call it the in-between or the twilight zone, that area uh, of brain waves. <clears throat> so I attempted to track down to find out because I was thinking, oh my gosh, my very own a kundalini energy and he's he's got the notion that it, that there's an evil eye up here instead of the notion that this is my pituitary gland offering health to me and vitality and life and and seer abilities so that I can can see the higher realms like that he thinks that it's some kind of a weapon he thinks that it's um, a death ray or something like that that he could personally use to to kill his enemies on earth. Oh my gosh, what can I do to prevent it like that? Well, so the thing about uh, about the Dreamtime realm is when we're in that arena, unless we're doing lucid dreaming, uh, then the dreams that we have and the energies that we have created and helped to maintain in our physical and higher subtle bodies on earth are kind of up for grabs amongst the negative astral entities and also amongst the um, the shadow of the personality of our friends and relations and and family and strangers spiritual adepts and so forth who are torqued to the dark in some way in some portion of their beingness um, so so what can we do how can we protect and preserve our, our well-intentioned energies so that in the third and fourth dimensions they may be prevented from causing harm, even deadly harm, when we're asleep. So, so that was my first thought, is how could I protect Earth from this, 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 this warring person who's trying to transform my energy for the good, for a vision of new life on new Earth, into his personal um, death ray, his personal, um, not that it's, not that it's possible, but the mere thought of that upset me quite, quite strongly. So, so I tried to find out who it was, and the people that came up were in several different groups of people that I know, tangentially, and each person in that, in each of those groups, let me see, there was one person who had had unfortunate incidents in his youth. People had died because of something he failed to do. Uh, and he had that background of um, kind of a feeling of protecting his family and so forth. So that was one person. Then there was another person who was a spiritual adept. And he uh, is, is leader of a group. And mind you, this is just dream time stuff. So it it, if it is in any extent true on some timeline and in some dimension, the likelihood is it's not true in many others. So this is just one um, timeline and dimension that needs healing. You know what I mean? So I hope if this person reads this, he won't take offense about it. It's more of a direction for healing. But anyway, <clears throat> to get back to this person, he was a spiritual adept and had... Um, concentrated on the development of spiritual skills, um, what they call cities in India, uh, psychic superpowers and so forth. And, uh, and he was also like 
looking at a way for his group to profit from turning my energy of the light to a kind of darkness that Army Navy might consider using in a Dreamtime realm scenario. So that was another person. Then there was a, a person uh, that in my own family, although very distantly related to me, someone that I wasn't, didn't know really, and he had been given uh, like so, kind of a proxy power over the greater family. I have this giant family, and it, in the Dreamtime realm, this was so that, and, and I didn't know about it. I didn't know that. I couldn't figure out why his voice was glommed to these other voices in this prophetic dream. Um, but I found out then, uh, as the night progressed in this interesting state called the in-between or the twilight zone, I found out quite a lot uh, about that. And all that is resolving today, I'm happy to say. So, um, but anyway, he came in as well. And as the main voice at that time, probably because of these undiscovered things that are just now revealing themselves. And let me see, was there somebody else? Uh, yes, there was another person in, a, in a, a group that I used, association that I used to belong to. Not the leader of the group, but someone that he knew who somehow had some soul wounding affinity because of a early childhood incident that, not early childhood, but teenage maybe incident that happened to him. He had some like uh, issue, I don't understand why, um, to do with taking power away from women. Yes, maybe maybe he didn't. Maybe he he was an adolescent, and something that he he decided to do was something that his mother didn't want to do. You know how that goes, and so he might have had a concern that women had too much power over him, and others in in that group might feel the same way that they don't want a woman telling them what to do. So, um, so so there was this glom of energy, a very interesting glom of energy, where. Male voices were glomming together, and maybe even visually for those that have that gift to see clairvoyantly what's happening, and trying to steal from a woman her what they considered to be the evil eye because of their soul wounding, but what was in fact the the directing force for the endocrine system that she had. That was me. <laughs> um, so I I figured that out. And then uh, I did what I could, which was very little. Everything depends on God, on aligning with God in terms of the will and the heart and the, and the mind. And so I left it to God. I, tr I did my best and I left it to God. And all of that has been resolved already today or is in the state of being becoming re resolved like a wave washing onto the beach a wave of resolution of negative energies and s salvation for humankind that's happening today in this time of the solar minimum odd huh very odd how at a time of solar minimum so much is happening by way of clearing the the uh, soul wounding of the humankind on earth and and clearing earth herself only God can do this kind of thing. It's amazing. So anyway, as time went on today, I went to church. And uh, I began to feel that here in this, in this uh, very philosophical about it, here in this realm of duality, uh, there's a certain density that consists the resonance of the third dimension and another uh Density that's a resonance of the fourth dimension, you see, and and those those two resonances depend on uh, the energy of Earth herself, the energy of Gaia. I've discussed before. Um, I had several blogs a long time ago, Mott and the Incoming Light, M A apostrophe A-T, and explained about how the incoming light is changing the densities of energies on Earth in the various dimensions. And uh, so those that, uh, that understanding, that channeling, uh, helped me to understand 
that there's really nothing I can do uh, about the misuse of my uh, kundalini energies when I'm sleeping. You see, when the light is strong in a person, then there will be ways for the dark to compensate for that and create a balance that um, that uh, creates an equilibrium with the current overall state of of density of light in in the, in that dimension on Earth. So so if I maintain myself ever vigilant when awake and turn my energy to the light, or try to transform the negative energies that are incoming to the positive energies of the higher dimensions, then then when I sleep that will happen, that, that torquing of by other people of my energies to the dark. The only answer I have from a personal point of view is to develop the power of um, Yoga Nidra ex as explained by uh, Swami J. Swami J.com, who, who did a wonderful job of explaining the aphorisms of the ancient Indian sage Patanjali. So you can go to Swami J.com and uh, he'll explain about Yoga Nidra. Nobody else that I've found on earth today explains it like he does. And those other people that um, propagate the notion of Yoga Nidra are talking about something different from what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being completely aware while sound asleep. I myself only experienced that state of reverie or transition that happens if I wake up in the middle of the night while dreaming and maintain conscious awareness during that transition state. This is not l lucid dreaming and this is not um, Yoga Nidra though. Other people, they never fall asleep at all. Would that not be cool? And so their energies cannot be mis misused in that way. Well, so, so from a, a more distant perspective, what I see in this dream, uh, and you're welcome to your own thoughts about what this dream means, but I feel it means that there are in every group today warring energies, warring energies that may be more fully expressed through certain personalities in the group, and uh, that as the light continues to come in, they will channel it less and less and absorb more and more of the light, so that the situation, I feel, will take care of itself. The issue of war on earth, the issues that come up with regard to Palestine and the Holy Land, um, the issues of, of war everywhere, I feel, will be mitigated by the incoming light in the coming year, 2018. So, another prophetic dream. I'd be interested to know what your interpretation of that dream would be. Setting mine completely aside, what would be yours? So, let me know in the comments if you, if you want to. Take care.